Assalamu alaikum everyone, this is Dr. Abdul Rafi here, starting a new platform and a new channel. Uh, a little introduction about myself, I am currently enrolled in BDS third year, doing it from Sin Institute of Oral Health Sciences that is a part of Jinnah Sin Medical University. There are three reasons why I chose BDS. Uh, the reason of studying medicine is that you get to know so much about the nature that how a single tiny cell carries multiple functions of life and lastly I wanted it to be my profession as well. I will be teaching dental material sciences from the book uh, Applied Dental Materials uh, by John F. McCabe and Angus W. G. Walls. These both authors are professors in the University of Newcastle. Walls is the professor of restorative dentistry there and uh, McCabe is the professor of uh, dental material sciences uh, there. In this very first video we will be discussing about the gypsum products. Uh, and uh, we will discuss uh, the three main headings sequentially from the book that are the introduction, the requirements of dental cast materials and lastly the composition. Starting from the introduction, I have divided the heading of introduction into subheadings. Now first we will learn the definition of uh, gypsum. Now what is gypsum? Gypsum is the naturally occurring uh, mineral. Gypsum is the naturally occurring white powdery mineral having chemical formula CSO4.2H2O and a chemical name of calcium sulfate dihydrate. Now the types of gypsum uh, chemical formulas on the basis of hydration. On the basis of hydration there are three types of uh, gypsums. Uh, number one is calcium sulfate dihydrate, the number two the calcium sulfate uh, hemihydrate and the calcium sulfate anhydrous. Uh, look uh, there is a difference uh, between the water of crystallization in these three types of gypsum products. Uh, uh, in the calcium sulfate dihydrate there are two uh, water molecules, uh, two water of uh, hydration water of crystallization and uh, in uh, calcium sulfate hemihydrate there is a half water of crystallization and in anhydrous, anhydrous gypsum there is no water of crystallization. Now thirdly the uses of gypsum. Where gypsum can be used in the dentistry? Uh, you, from gypsum you can make cast, you can make study models, uh, you can make uh, dyes and it can be used as an investment material too. Now Moving on, what is model and what is dye? It is very essential to know the terminologies in uh, dental material sciences uh, to know your subject very well. Now, uh, the term model. Model is simply the replica of uh, several teeth or it can be a replica of a dentulous arch replicating soft tissue structures and dye simply is the replica of a single tooth. Now moving on to the types given by the ISO standards. It is very important uh, from the OSPI point of view and from the examination point of view. Uh, whenever uh, examiner ask and list the types uh, by ISO uh, standards uh, you have to write it as it is and the type 1 is dental plaster used for taking impression the type 2 is a dental plaster used for model preparation the type 1 and type 2 uh, are from the or I should say are the derivatives of beta hemihydrate I will tell it uh, later in the video what is uh, beta hemihydrate now the type 3 is dental stone it can be used uh, for dye making for model making and type 4 is the dental stone stone used for making dye. It has high strength and low expansion. These two properties, the high strength and low expansion uh, uh, give it advantage uh, uh, that it can be used in a investment material as well. Now the type 5, the dental stone, uh, it can be used for dye. It is high strength and high expansion. Now the requirements of uh, dental cast materials. Uh, now keep in mind that uh, among all the dental materials there are few common four to five uh, requirements that would make your dental material a perfect material. Uh, number one is dimensional accuracy. Now uh, what uh, it is mean by 
dimensional accuracy uh, dimensional accuracy means that your material should undergo minimal dimensional changes before and after the setting that your material should not contract so much before and after the setting or it should not uh, expand so much before and after the setting that it would uh, make it less adequate now uh, the low contact angle low contact angle gives you the good wetting now thirdly the adequate mechanical properties adequate mechanical properties include that the your material should be strong enough that uh, it should not undergo fracture easily and it should be hard enough that it not uh, undergo indentation or scaring easily and now what is indentation if I am uh, forcing a, a material like this it is indentation now the low contact angle gives you the good wetting it uh, is important to avoid surface voids and it will give you the replicating structure pretty identical and pretty perfect now the biocompatibility of a material the material should be biocompatible it should not uh, raise uh, or it should not induce any chemical reaction any chemical irritation with the human uh, uh, cells or with the human organ and it should not induce any po post operative uh, sensitivity now the composition uh, before telling that uh, how dental plaster and dental stone is uh, made i want you to acknowledge that uh, the gypsum powder which we get in the laboratory is the calcium sulfate and hemihydrate we mix it with water it undergoes a chemical reaction and becomes calcium sulfate dihydrate then we can pour into the impressions so we can make the models or dyes now the dental plaster dental plaster is also known as the plaster of paris very oftenly asked in the bcqs uh, that what type and what type of uh, plaster is known as uh, plaster of paris uh, now how it is made and uh, we heated gypsum at 120 degrees centigrade we get irregular more porous and less dense particles we call them the beta hemihydrate crystals as they are more porous uh, and we have a formula of density that density is equal to mass over volume as the particles are more porous it takes up more water so the volume portion rises up and the density goes down so it is less dense that is it this is the reason why it is less dense and it is soft as it is mentioned in the classification the type 1 and type 2 is the dental plaster now how the dental stone is made dental stone is made by heating gypsum at slightly higher temperature 125 degrees centigrade in an autoclave then we get a regular less porous and more dense particles we call them alpha hemihydrate crystals same reason here why are they uh, as they are less porous uh, the volume portion goes down and the density rises up so it is more dense uh, and it is uh, more comparatively harder than the dental plaster uh, as it is mentioned again in the classification type 3 type 4 and type 5 uh, are the dental stone one more thing i like to mention here that the, the manufacturers add certain colors uh, certain color dyes to distinguish uh, between the dental plaster and dental stone uh, the colors uh, might be uh, yellowish uh, pale yellowish uh, and blue or pink in color so i hope uh, this video helps uh, you guys in your studies one interesting thing uh, i would like to share about dental plaster that uh, why dental plaster uh, is uh, called as plaster of paris uh, in 1666 there was a fire accident in the Paris so the king of France ordered the people that all the houses that are made of wood and should be covered in the gypsum so when they go in a search of gypsum they found abandoned gypsum in the Montmartre hill of Paris that's why then it is named as plaster of Paris. Uh, that's all folks. I hope you liked it.
थैंक यू सो मच